So the materials that I'll be using to create my upcycled art journal is a vintage book, some um, little pieces of artwork that I've created using my solar printing kit, and I'll also be including some real plant pieces inside the art journal um, to create spaces where um, you, you don't have to see the text so much. I'll be adding some um, lighter coloured paints to cover over the the text and I'll be using some brush pens, some washi tape, some chalk pens and I'll be sticking down my art pieces with double sided tape and you'll also need a pair of scissors. Having said that, you can also use an empty art journal. You don't need a vintage book to do what we're doing here. I just like to use the, the vintage art journal because it fills up some of the spaces with some, with some text that you might not necessarily see or notice until you're reading back over in days to come. And sometimes it's quite poetically beautiful, the words that pop out. So for instance, actually I noticed in this book, what did I notice? Their wings at first seemed that nobody had time to attend to the little fairies, though everybody gave them a quick look as they passed between the streets of waxen cells. Presently, however, a little... And then I can go into here where it's all sort of subtracted and reduced and I see just words pop out. I see poetry, beauty, please cradle suddenly gauzy wings it's just so beautiful it's quite a nice way to feel inspired um, but just art journaling in general is a beautiful practice to um, to take part in yourself you might want to do it daily you might want to do it weekly I do it seasonally every now and again I'll pick up an art journal and and fill it up and it's just a nice way to um, to release the thoughts of the day and to be in the moment. It's a nice way to also get in flow when you're an artist and you're just concentrating on the line and the texture and it doesn't matter, you can just automatically create the artwork as you go. You don't need to think um, what is the intention that you're sitting out to create. I think it actually works better when you're art journaling to just um, turn the tap on with your creativity and just let it come through your hand. And that way you'll end up with something that you didn't expect, you'll surprise yourself and it's just a beautiful way to um, also share with our children a way that there's no rules with your creativity and um, it's a nice way to also help your child release themselves from any rules that they might feel around their creativity. A lot of the time we feel pressure to, to create a fully developed drawing even where it has to be completely coloured in and you know perfectly so I actually really am a strong believer in deconstructing those restraints and helping our creativity to be flexible by going back to the roots of just putting um, pen to paper and just free drawing and uh, free flowing and I think that it's um it's it's good for everyone to do this is just one of the beautiful ways that you can journal and it's a way that doesn't require a lot of thought. You can just be in creative flow. You can just tinker away. So I'm using an old book, an old book that I don't have any sentimental connection to. It's not a precious relic, but it is beautiful. So the way that I like to upcycle these vintage books into beautiful art journals is I randomly pick excerpts and I cut them out and stick them in different places and that way at the end when you've compiled uh, many different pages with um, edited text you end up with a dialogue that's very abstract but it's also very beautiful and you can find your own meaning in it and it's just a beautiful way of creating an art journal automatically so I'm using a lot of my blueprints here that I've created with the beautiful blue printing kits that I sell in my Etsy shop. If you want to grab one of those, I'll leave a link below. Actually, what I might do is put the, what do you call it? The URL for the, the code. And that way you can see it a bit better with your scanner. 
And one of the things that I like to do as well, one of my hobbies is collecting different fragments in nature. And in this case, I've actually filled different sketchbooks with um, pieces of fern and bracken that I've collected over the years. And this is just a time that I like to pull them out. And what I do is I work with them to create the solar prints. So I've always got ferns in the studio. I don't always need to go out and forage. And I'm just actually using some of these ferns today to fix into place because I think they work beautifully side by side with the blueprints that are made with the ferns as well. So it's a real connection to nature and it reminds me of all the different times that I've been walking and collected and had the beautiful meditative process of actually pressing these ferns in just my journals and actually this old book before I've also used to hold um, plants in so it, I might stumble across some hidden plants in here and it's actually a place where I also store these little blueprints after I've made them so that they remain flat and ready for me to take photos of if I need to do a little photo shoot or create some content for my Etsy shop or create some content for my Instagram. I've always got my ferns and my beautiful blueprint images that I've made on hand. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually just cutting her out a little extra bit of an arm out of the piece of text just to pop it on top of that fern so it has that more dimension of her holding it. And what I like about the text that's going to be sort of edited here is the text is a little bit more hidden it's a little bit more construed you have to work a little bit more imaginatively to find it and here as well the text that will remain will be on the actual pot plant itself and one of the ways that I like to build up the surface in these books is by you know, I use either white or my white actually didn't have enough coverage so I've added in some of my skin tone which has got a lot more coverage that actually works quite well with doing the faces here so they get a bit of a of a warmer color to them and it also matches very well in with the pages the color of the pages has this um, similar color palette to it yeah and um, I suppose just being in a beautiful place of flow and thought is a nice place to be when you can just create. So I've made these actual little clips over a couple of days. So I've left my little station set up and um, every now and again I just go and sit over there and create for about 20 minutes. So actually there was probably about three hours of footage here that I've sped up for you. But if you'd like me to make an edit to put up on YouTube of the of like a slower version because this is quite fast paced only because I wanted to make sure that you got to see all of the little edits and all of the little illustrations and it's kind of fun to see it all come together quickly sometimes too but I quite like watching some slow videos on YouTube where people are sharing their creative process in real time so leave me a comment if you'd like me to share some of these in real time in a a slower version and so the way that I'm building up the faces and the hair first I'll start with a brush pen which um, you know what they are they're like a watercolor pen that already has the paint in it and the nib is a brush and then I'm going in when it dry when it dries and I'm filling in a bit more with the white um, combination with the skin tone combination just to sketch out the hair and to also cover over some more areas of that text just to help make the um, the images pop a little bit more but I'm being very careful as well not to um, erase all the text because I do want there to still be those little pockets which will bring pleasure when you're flipping back through over the pages and they just it creates another layer of the content um, and what I've done here as well, I've, I've added some washi tape just to give dimension to the coffee table there and also the, the watering can. I had some gold washi tape and I've just trimmed it into a few different segments to create a nice shiny gold uh, watering can. And this one isn't going to be finished yet. I'm going to pick it up where I'm leaving off about now in the next video. But I hope you enjoy watching 
my art process unfold. I hope that you feel inspired to pick up some random pieces in your home or studio. Grab an old book. It doesn't have to even be an old book. Just grab a piece of paper. Um, you can print something out of the computer if you like. If you don't have access to um, a vintage book, you can print out pretty much anything these days, can't you? So you could just print out a vintage page from a, an old book and collage it and build it up in a similar way. So here I've added like a little tip of the fern and I think it's really about now planting seeds of hope for our future and encouraging all of those around us to tap into hope and to keep to keep holding on to hope. It's such a powerful feeling to hold hope and the opposite of having hope is feeling hopeless which is not a very comfortable place to be but it always feels a lot better when you can do just a little alteration a little shift in your consciousness to bring you back into hope and it's my hope that a little bit of art journaling can help if you're feeling that way help shift you back into hope the beautiful thing about art journaling is it takes you out of your um, busy mind chatter it can take you just into being directly in flow and in the moment and you know it can make you forget any other tasks that need doing in that moment and you can just concentrate on the texture on the the stroke you know you it, it's such a beautiful place to be where you don't actually have to be putting too much thought in I'm really pleased with how this came together I haven't planned any of it I've just gone into my flow and picked up whatever materials I've had around me just to pull this together so I hope you like leave a comment below if you'd like to see more videos like this and I hope you have a beautiful day